What's bracken, guys? Welcome to episode 11 of season 2 of my West Bromwich Albion career mode. So we're getting right into this episode with a match against Newcastle United at St. James Park. And they're actually not doing too well this season, as you can see, sitting 15th, fairly close to that relegation uh, zone. So definitely a game that we should be winning, even though it is a tough task to play Newcastle at St. James Park. And of course, they have some quality players on their side actually have Ben Arfa back with them of course after being on loan with Hull City in the previous season and we put out this lineup right here Ocampos out wide again of course and uh, Claudio Yalkub is playing in place of Mulumbu who is out with a yellow card suspension and I think I'm going to play him in one more match Yalkub because he's been cl complaining so much about playing time and he goes off and on like oh I want to leave oh I want to stay and I probably just want to try to because I really want to keep him for depth uh, for the next few seasons if he wants to stay on you'll see some great play however from uh, Newcastle United and just unfortunate unlucky goal um, Pocinoli took a touch on it I think I took too many touches on that and unfortunately uh, slid in and was able to Riviera I believe that was was able to slide in and knock that into the net we'll take a look on the replay Again, I wish it would have auto-cleared because it was a strange situation. Unfortunately, no auto-clearance in that uh, situation, which I really wish there was. We'll see. However, Hector Herrera is going to come back. A great tackle from him. Plays Joel Campbell over the top, who's going to cut and use that wonderful agility. He's going to take a shot, and he's going to finish. A great finish from Joel Campbell. Of course, he's been, our, I would say he's been our best player this season. Ide has, I think he has some more goal, a few more goals than Campbell. But uh, Campbell also has just provided created so much space especially now I've moved him basically in that striker role where he can just kind of run around be kind of a free roam striker we'll see some good play right here uh, from Brunt he's going to storm down the wing uh, trying to close him down and a great one two from E-Day to Brunt some beautiful play going to keep on going he's going to send this low cross into Campbell he's going to finish that what a f beautiful run of play from Brunt in E-Day and then of course that wonderful low cross and just look at them caressing each other ever so gently as well. And uh, just look at that. Uh, hits the post. Very unlucky. Um, so they'll take this corner. And I tried to bring Olson in. Oh, I just do not know why he was hanging on the outside of the box. And a great near post cross and finished. Very disappointing. I thought I deserved the win. I mean, Newcastle and I did not threaten much. And this is really kind of more just a goal highlights uh, episode, I'll have to say. But, um... Just look at that. I believe that hit off of Yoko, Jakob or hit off of the post. I uh, hit off of the post and in. Unfortunately, I just do not know why Jakob didn't jump because I think all he really had to do was kind of jump ahead of that out, but he didn't. And they were able to grab the draw. Very disappointing, I have to say. Again, I just thought we needed three points and could have gotten the three points and deserved the three points. One of those matches, unfortunately, and we'll have to go back uh to our next matchup which will be against Liverpool with only a point and as you can see I did not make any uh, transfers for the winter transfer window um, I just do not have enough funds because I spent it all in the summer winter summer winter summer winter transfer window and uh, so yeah that's why I did not make any moves so West Brom here we're playing against Liverpool and uh, they're pretty close to this in the table and they have a game in hand can and could make some room on us if they do get a result. So uh, we really want to be able to grab the points in this matchup. So we're going to put out Foster, Mir, Dawson, Oson, Pocinoli, Jakob again, Ocampos, uh, Herrera, Brunt, Campbell, and Ide. And unfortunately, it's a terrible decision playing Jakob again. We'll see in the, uh, very shortly after we take a look at Liverpool's lineup. And they just are so stacked. Of course, we beat them in the semifinal of the Capital One Cup, and they have the likes of Pogba uh, and Gerard in midfield. It's going to be a tough task for our uh, center to control the midfield um, in this matchup. We'll see ball deflects out to po Paul Pogba. He's going to take a deflection, and Jakob tries to clear it, hits it off of Sterling, gets beat to make it even worse, and very poor defending. Some a flick on to Coutinho is going to finish that. That is really was some beautiful play though to see that flick on. Um, and I've just noticed um, recently the computer is showing a lot more. Um, just they're trying to shoot and trying to finish. They have more like that deadly strike uh, to them, that deadliness. And of course, you can see right there they're finishing. Um, 
I've seen a lot more skill moves lately. So, I mean, let me, let me know if you guys that play crew mode have seen that, noticed that. I mean, they just, computer has shown a lot more drive to, I mean, just really uh, just tear you apart. As you can see, Coutinho showing a lot of that uh, just agility. Played a perfect ball and a perfect finish from Asaidi. I just couldn't really do too much about that one. So, just pretty embarrassing at home to lose in this fashion. And even after that, they just kept on going. And th these are automatic almost. You see these little short... Uh, plays off short off uh, short corners off corner kicks and all that off of free kicks they're almost automatic it seems like in a course that's a finish and so we lose that one four one uh we do get some good news that Lescott is coming back it's also and he did a good job for us um in his little playing time um at times i mean he wasn't that great in that last matchup but um it would be it will be nice to have Lescott back eventually for us. We'll see. Uh, Olson actually had a really good game in this matchup against Centerland, and another match that we need to be winning. But um, of course, we our form is kind of dropping at the say, and you'll see again in this up in this uh, matchup right here. It's really sad because we are on we were on pace to grab that um, Europa League or Champions League spots, but we're really gonna have to push hard after this episode to get back into that picture. As you can see, I'm showing the walkouts. I usually don't, but yeah, we really have to get get it together after this uh, f after this episode because we are playing Tottenham twice, which is I mean they're second or third in the league, and then we we will be playing. Um, I'm not sure the other opponent was, but we'll be playing them in the league as well as the. Uh, Capital One Cup final at Wembley, which is going to be a huge matchup. So hopefully we can bounce back after this episode because it's been quite tough, and we really need to. If you want to be able to beat them, uh, Tottenham in the final, you see carved up the defense. Very poor defending on my part again. And like I was saying earlier, you can see a lot more of that individuality, um, that individual play from wingers like Johnson, who finished that. And uh, it's pretty cool to see because I thought the CPU just really played too much of that possession style. Um, they were always trying to keep possession back passes and everything. weren't really going towards goal. It's nice to see that from the computer. Um, and as you can see, Ocampo is just so shifty right here. He's sending this cross in. Unfortunately, that's Jones who's going to get in front of Campbell or I think it was a Campbell or a Day um, on that play to prevent a tap in right there. We'll see some good opportunity again from Sunderland. A great job from Mulumbu to head that off the line. We would like that in the earlier matchup from Jakob to uh, prevent that header, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So Ide will come through right here. We're at the end of the matchup. Campbell has a nice opportunity. He's going to send a cross in. Maybe there was a low, should have been a low cross, and that's going to be the last chance of the episode. Great job from Sunderland defense to get back on that um, to prevent a game, uh, a point-saving goal right there. So, of course, we lose 1-0. We're going to take a look at the squad report right now. So, Foster, of course, great form. Our backup keeper, he's not doing too bad. Some of the guys like Gamboa is going up, Mir is going up, Dawson's going up. Oson is for, unfortunately going down and is getting older. Julio is going up and Pocanoli, Mulumbu. Uh, Jacob is pretty pissed off. Uh, Campbell is going up. Herrera is going up. Dorans, uh, Lundstrom is on loan. Uh, Frara, Moni, some of our uh, academy guys. Ocampos, Ide, Zara is better. Hino, even though he's in terrible form. And it's really nice to see that. Uh, Castillo's hasn't gone up, but I think he should, honestly, because he's been great. Varela is going down as well, unfortunately. So we'll round out this episode by taking a look at the table. So we're sitting in eighth, tight on uh, points with Everton. So next episode will be huge as we'll be playing third place Spurs in the Barclays Premier League as well as in the Capital One Cup Final at Wembley. So stay tuned for that episode, guys. Hopefully we can improve our standing in the league. In the league. And I'll catch you guys.